bonds of blood are meaningless. And the only bond of any importance is the bond of Iman. And as we're lowered down in our grave, our brothers and our sisters are the brothers and sisters of Iman. Those are, those are the people that you will be raised up with as a family. It's not the people that you might have been directly related to by blood, and yet there was no Iman to bind you. Because the blood bonds are earthly. Just as we came from the earth, we go back to the earth. But the bonds of Iman are eternal. And, and that's really important thing to remember. So the Arab and the Ajim have to recognize you're dealing with different sociological background. The Prophet Sallallahu gave people their due. He did not treat the Bedouin like he treated the Hadari Arabs because he recognized they had a different sociological makeup. They grew up in a different environment. The Bedouin Arabs, they used to yank him, yank his coat. He would smile at them. If a Hadari Arab did that, uh, it would be completely unacceptable. But he recognized there was a harshness in the desert Arab and yet he was still gentle with them. We have to recognize some of our brothers have harshness in them. You know, some of us. And, and, and it comes to all of us. And, and if I become harsh, then I need my brothers, one, to give me some reflection, but in a way of nasiha, in a way encouraging me uh, to change, not in a way of... And one of the things you often find in masjid is the raising of voices, the, the fighting, and, and this is one of the signs of the end of time. Rafa al-Aswat bin Masajid, raising the voices in the masjid, the t- commentary, by differences. And then you have Arab, Arab, which is a big problem. And we need to get out of the stereotypical attacks on all Palestinians are like that, the Egyptians are all like that, Yemenis are, you know, like this, this stereotypical. There's always truth in stereotypes. But if, you, if it becomes the way in which you look at people, you, you, you do not allow for the possibility of seeing the Sadiqin from that people. And Sidi Ahmed Zabruq said, every group of people has bad qualities. And if you meet a man from that people who is free of those bad qualities, know that you're with a Sadiq. And, and the point is, is that you want to seek out the Salihin. And if it's an Egyptian Salih, he will be free from those qualities in the Egyptian society that are, uh, they're, they're, they're not good qualities. If he's an American Salih, it'll be the same. If he's a Yemeni Salih, it'll be the same. But you have to recognize every community has their people. And for the faults of the Muslims, we should try our best to lower our eyes. There are obviously many subtypes that go into that. Um, but I really, we need, in, given the time that we're living in, the age that we're living in, as an ummah, we have to start coming together. The uh, Imam Siyuti, Ibn Hajj al-Asqalani, and Imam Sha'ani all said that this ummah would come to a close by the end of the 15th century. We're in 15, uh, over 1530 by the by the point, and 1519, uh, 1419 by the... Uh, the migration point, the, the hijrah. And uh, really the signs are very clear and we need to unite as an ummah. We have a great deal of enemies and we have to stop making enemies of ourselves. And we need to really begin to excuse each other and take this to heart. If everybody in this auditorium did that, you would, you would be a transforming element in your own communities. But this is based on the within our own self. We have to struggle against our own self. We have to begin to unite on broad-based principles. We have to begin to overlook at this stage in the game. If the house is burning down and the man's handing you a bucket, you don't say you follow a medhab or not. You, you take the bucket and you pass it down the line. And, and Darul Islam is on fire. And we need to put out the fire and get our house in shape. Really, we need to put our house in shape. And, there, and, and every brick we're trying to put on, we've got a million enemies trying to pull it off. Right? So we need to work together instead of each other, you know, taking the brick of another and throwing it down. And recognizing that Islam is a universal tradition. It encompasses uh, many, many views and, and viewpoints on our Prophet taught tolerance. And he taught different ways of viewing things. And the other thing that I would say is, in many ways the West is being given to us. It's being given to us. The Prophet ﷺ in Mecca, the only thing that he wanted was to be able to speak freely. In these countries, we can still speak. We can go out and talk to people. We can call people to Islam. But if we're calling them to that rubbish bin in the picture, it's just not a very uh, appealing picture. I mean, we should be calling them to those other pictures. You know, the straight and narrow. 
the, 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 the beautiful natural fitra nature of Islam. And if we do that, people will respond. So my plea to myself and to all of us is really as individuals to make a commitment. The Prophet ﷺ said, if the Dajjal comes now, I will protect you. But if I'm gone and he comes, each one of you must protect himself. And we have to protect ourselves against the, 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 the divide and conquer mentality of the dominant cultures that are opposing us and attacking us. Again, Shadow, we'll be breaking for Salat al Maghrib, which I think the time starts about um, quarter past nine, if I'm correct. Um, we have uh, um, somebody who would like to take Shahada, I believe. Two hands up. Yeah. Um, so, who, um, whoever it is who would like to take the Shahada, please. Oh, they don't have to the time. No, I want to see that. Afterwards, okay. Um, we'll make some time afterwards, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, we have a brother to be inshallah who wants to say shahada um, leaving Hinduism and embracing Islam alhamdulillah. So uh, this